this was at a basketball game and and one of the persons watching the game saw her and started recording because it seems that they were perplexed and i have questions as well because what is going on if medication actually worked would you still need to fill your prescription over and over and over again you tell me do you ever actually look at this really look what do you see and more importantly what do you not see you don't see any buildings any roads anything right and they're gonna say that's too high so how could you possibly see it so then we look at this and we're seeing lights what lights are we seeing what lights are strong enough that we're seeing them from space but we can't see any buildings. This is Ireland from space. No buildings, no roads, no nothing. This is Ireland from space at night. You can see lights. What are those lights? Why are you seeing a light? This is Italy from space during the day. Italy from space at night. Can't see a single structure or anything during the day, but you can see street lights at night, house lights, porch lights. I got it. Maybe they're lighters from Taylor Swift concert. And for those of you who stuck around through this, while I was searching through the NASA footage to find this, I found this cool little thing. What do you think's happening here? It's supposed to be from NASA's live feed, and for those of you who say it's not, here you go, ISS. All we're asking is that when you see stuff like this, think logically, think independently. What are saying all of this Diddy commotion isn't the thing we should be looking at. This is all the distraction. Okay. Literally the same time Diddy got arrested, okay. something huge happened just now, and it's around 23andMe. The DNA test? It's a DNA ancestry company. It takes your saliva, they test it, and it shows your ancestry. Yeah. Well, what do they have? Your I'll DNA you sample okay. of pretty much everyone in the world that <laughs> wanted to find out their ancestry. Yeah, so what happened? When Diddy got arrested, when this whole commotion is on the rise, just so happens. Every single board member of 23andMe quit all at the same Wait, time. Whoa. So check this out. There's hella yeah, theories going know. on. Did you know the CEO? Ooh. It was the wife of the CEO of YouTube and Google. The wife Wait. owned 23andMe. The husband owned Google. Theory goes, the reason all of those board members left is because there's some things going on that are going to be very unethical in the future of the company. Okay, they have all of our data, even DNA data. On top of that, they have Google search engine. They have every single piece of information about you including your biochemistry now they're so smart what's the future of commerce where they can sell you things and you have to pay for it what's one thing that you'll spend all your money for because if you don't it's over food and water yeah health they have every single person's dna oh, they can look at all the diseases where they can give you a cure you tell me that the one place in the country that has lithium in it and quartz mines in it the one place in the country where that happens just so happened to get leveled by a hurricane. And you're telling me, because I'm from Florida, I heard that storm when it came through. I think they called it Helen. And, and, and I watched how the atmosphere changed. I've been through a lot of hurricanes, Jack. That was a manufactured hurricane. The thunder and lightning doesn't even sound right, man. Listen to it. Use your ears and use your eyes and don't believe nothing that you're telling. they're telling you. Because these people are pulling operations. We've been through crazy, crazy summertime with two assassination attempts on a former president. And now we got storms coming up through the center of America where lithium mines are just so happen to be sitting. I'm supposed to believe that. I'm just supposed to take that and say, oh, yeah, that's facts. I don't believe nothing these people say. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard uh, from people in the Pentagon that the buzzword in the, in the secret of secrets in the Pentagon is uh, the Sumerian gods are returning. And that's what they're referring to is that whole area uh, uh, that uh, Peter's Wow. Can you repeat that again, just in case anybody missed it? The well, buzzword uh, in... In the Pentagon, in the, you know, the military circles that are in the know about the cover-up here, um, the, 
they kind of, in whisper tones, talk about the return of the Sumerian gods. And they're talking about the, uh, what we would call aliens or fallen angels, returning. Mother Nature is going to go crazy on humanity in the end of times. You will see earthquakes, you will see floodings, you will see cyclones, you will see fire. You will see wondrous things happening on a global level, not in a local, in an area or a region or a country. No, this is going to be on a global mm. level at a very vast and a very rapid pace. Mother Nature will go wild on humanity. Why? Now, some of the things that are happening in our times and will happen later on are natural. Because according to the Holy Bible, the Lord Jesus ordered them to take place. Are natural, but not all. Some are man-made. Very unnatural. And we've noticed some of the unnatural things happening in the last year or two. Hollywood secret circles, celebrities in Hollywood. How deep does this go with Diddy? It goes deep, man. I think it goes not only to directors, producers. I think it goes higher up. I think it goes, you know, studio owners. I think it goes to politicians, world leaders, people who are in different parts of the government. I think that Diddy's list is Epstein's list. These people are running in the same circles. Well, you got to remember, Diddy was very close to Hillary Clinton. Who was close to Epstein? Oh, Bill Clinton. Got you. So you mean that? That those two wouldn't be linked at any time and did he had like the craziest parties and the only other person who had crazy parties with high level people was epstein and they both had islands did he had an island called love island his last album was called the love album off the grid it's almost like he's foreshadowing his first album no way out yeah that doesn't sound ominous and then he has forever and his first single on that one was called public enemy number one under the earth there are seven more planets that are discs what yeah, Seven can't. flat worlds? Pretty much. I'm the only all one good. who can show you from astrology, from the Bible, and from the East, and from all traditions, how they all syncretize and concur that the Earth is a stationary horizontal plane. I love You have to do it like that. If you don't do it like that, you can't do it properly. You can't just have one angle. You can't just say, oh, all the scientific experiments that have been conducted prove George Airy, James Bradley, Sunyak, Michelson Morley, they all prove that the Earth is stationary, and that's your one angle. Angle. You can't just have one angle. I'm coming from the Jewish tradition. I'm coming from Bhagavad Gita. I'm showing how the Bible proves it with great etymological proofs. And no one else is doing that. I do that and all the other angles. Is this a dimension? Are we living in an energy force that has multiple layers? You know the Kabbalistic tree, right? There it is there. The ten sephiroth, your ten fingers. There's uh, Kitha and there's Malkuth, the earth. So is it a dimension? Yes, it is. But it's all these things from Kitha to earth which is ether to earther, same word. So if you're asking, what's the earth? Well, it's just ether in a gross, more solidified form. I'm this is the forbidden pen. Monsters have been keeping humans captive, silently watching them from outside their homes every night, even imitating their every move and word. Their goal is to transform into human form so they can blend into the human world. At this moment, a violent banging on the door is heard, indicating that the monsters have become extremely angry because the rules have been broken once again. The group pushes a cabinet against the door only to discover a square imprint where the cabinet originally stood. Daniel strikes the floor with force, causing it to deform. When they move the floor aside, they find a hidden passage. With danger looming, they quickly climb down the ladder The cellar is filled with food, enough to last the four of them for years, and even more so, there are various research manuscripts. Looking around, a computer catches their attention. Fortunately, the computer is still in good condition and can be turned on. The content on it is a research log by a professor named Rory. He was the one who accidentally discovered these mysterious creatures and built this fortress in their habitat, referring to the place as Wonderland. At that time, the creatures held no ill will toward him and simply observed him motionlessly from outside the house every night. However, as time passed, the monsters began to resemble him more and more, and one of them even appeared in the form of a child right before his eyes. This particular one had far greater copying abilities and more complex emotions than the others, which led the professor to a bold idea. Imagine what one could do. One could even cheat death. 
As the research progressed, this special monster was kept in captivity by the professor and it even began to develop some ability to communicate with humans, though its emotions remained unstable. I'm going to open the last video recorded by the professor. The professor, who'd been in this place for 300 days for some unknown reason, decided to kill the monster he had nurtured and then take his own life, anticipating that others might come here in the future. He left a boat by the river, indicating that if they followed the direction of the birds, they could escape this place by boat. His only wish was for those who escaped to go to his office and destroy all his research findings. After saying his last words, the professor took a gun and went upstairs. Two gunshots were finally heard. The chemicals that seep into your skin, causing many to become deceased, is being put into millions of children and adult clothes. And this is no accident. People were terrified after South Korean researchers reported alarmingly high levels of deadly chemicals in over 144 Xi'an, Temu, and AliExpress clothes, with levels 10 to 229 above the legal limit. Deadly chemicals like phthalates and lead that when worn for hours at a time daily can result in obesity, diabetes, heart issue, premature births, infertility, mutation of the cells, and many more issues that can form within a year and for some just months. Reports from Science Directly warns us that once the clothes enter the home, we are in danger as these chemicals will stay, become airborne, and be breathed in. It can even spread to other clothes if in the same machine or even contaminate food. The most concerning issues have been found in shoes and jewelry. While they do exist in clothes, it's a bit less. It almost seems that people don't believe me when I tell them that the polyester nylon yoga athletic outfits are literally made of plastic. Polyester nylon is plastic, polyethylene terephthalate, and it's plastic processed with insane amounts of chemicals, phthalates, bisphenols, PFAS, forever chemicals, uh, which are all endocrine disruptors messing with hormones it's like they don't even believe me when i tell them and it's because it's such a hard truth to swallow that it can be causing disease inside of you can be causing all these issues it's literally pure chemically processed pure plastic and the reason it has these moisture wicking and all these properties and it's great at getting rid of uh, moisture and bouncing off moisture is the chemicals they use to process it the forever chemicals that's what's giving it those abilities which make it a thousand times more harmful. It can literally cause infertility. Say you do have a child and you're wearing these polyester nylon plastic outfits, it can cause developmental issues in the child. Actually, this is the little secret that hospitals don't want you to know about. And look, this proves how broken our healthcare system is based on something I call the hospital cartel. Technically, one in two hospitals are classified as nonprofits. So what that means is they're not paying taxes on any of the profits they make. So then the question is, is why are they charging $200 for a single aspirin or $1,500 just to observe you overnight? So the reason is, is they figured out how to break the system and make it work in their favor. 92% of all Americans have insurance. So the insurance companies will negotiate with the hospital's to services, roughly somewhere around 30% of total bill if the hospital is in network. Now you understand what's crazy is the hospital charges these crazy prices already knowing they've already negotiated the price that the insurance is going to pay for those hospital services. So in charging $100, they charge $1,000 knowing that they're going to get paid 30% on that bill. But this is how they get you. They know you're going to have to pay the full amount until you've reached your max out of pocket on your insurance. So now you can see how they scam about just the insurance company, but they also get you because you're an easy target. So you're put in a position where you don't have the leverage and you don't have hundreds of lawyers at your disposal and you're stuck paying whatever the hospital charges. And honestly, at, at this point, I don't know how we're going to fix it. I don't doubt that they were playing music. Other people heard it. But when people say that music played as the ship went down, that is a ghastly Horrible lie. Arthur Lewis, a bedroom steward, was saved because he was detailed to row one of the lifeboats. What were the other passengers like in the lifeboat? Well, they never spoke, you see. In the boat all night, but they never spoke. They just sat about, sat back down there waiting to get picked up. But you never talked to each other? No, well, we didn't know one another, so we couldn't get in conversation. You know, when we look at the figures, there were less people saved from the steerage class That's right. than there were from the first Quite class. Right, because they were not allowed to go on the, on the first class deck. And that yes. And on my evening slippers, diamond buckles. No, not real diamonds, but diamond. 
and I had a wool cap and two fox furs and a paper thin broad tail coat and no underwear and no stockings but a pair of velvet slippers and these buckles and I lost a buckle. I found a life belt in one of the cabins, the first class cabins. I put this on, not so, not securely, and I was walking aimlessly on deck, thinking what to do next. And uh, looking over the side, I saw the boats being launched for the uh, survivors, and it was with the other side, no chance there. And then the horrible fear was in my heart, and I think everybody else's, that the dreadful, dreadful suction that had drawn us towards the Titanic would suck us under the Titanic. Hey, y'all. I know there's a lot going on, Can't. but Wyoming's on fire. The whole mountain is on fire. They have about 73, 74,000 acres just burning right now, y'all. The animals are running out in the fire, y'all, looking just confused, y'all. Apparently, this has been going on for days, and there is no end to it. Like, they can't even contain the fire right now, y'all. They have all kinds of helicopters and firefighters, but they still cannot contain this fire. This is like, it's out of control. Here's what it looked like from another perspective, y'all. Look at those smoke clouds, boy. They're like still. Look at that. Y'all can't even see the mountains. You can't even see the mountains. And the people in Wyoming feel like they're not getting any coverage on this as well. Look, this is from Idaho. You cannot see what you can't see the mountains, y'all. Look at this. There's a hurricane on the Gulf Coast heading for Florida. There's a fire in Wyoming. The bio lab in Georgia blew up. California is experiencing copious amounts of earthquakes, including last night. We have Hurricane Kirk out in the Atlantic Ocean. And then Leslie, that's actually making its way to Florida in two weeks, they say. The Sahara is flooding. I mean, am I missing anything else, y'all? Unexplained plasma, lightning, no sound strikes happening all over the world. Let me know what I'm missing down in the comments below, y'all. This is strictly for entertainment purposes only. Share this video, y'all. Let's get this shift. Peace in. The reason that all your computer screens are blue lit, the reason none of them are red lit, the reason none of them pay attention to circadian biology is because that original technology was developed in a government program that Bobby Kennedy knows about and I happen to know about because I went to medical school at LSU. For those of you who have never heard about Operation Paperclip, you think it's all conspiracy theory. So at Tulane Neurology and Tulane Neurosurgery in the 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s, the CIA started a program there where they would do all these crazy things to monkeys. And the CIA wanted to see how they could control things utilizing different things like drugs and things like that. Where the neurosurgeons got involved, which is my clade, we would drill help the tops of the heads off, put wires into the thalamus, put electricity in there, and kind of see what kind of behavioral changes we could have. One of the guys that was in that program was a guy named Professor Delgado. He got the idea to take it in a bigger animal. When he saw that we could control the behavior with the wired device, he said, what if we do it wirelessly? So he checked it in monkeys and checked it in bulls, and it turned out you can do it wirelessly with RFID chips and semiconductors. And the CIA took it to the next level. They said, well, since this is electromagnetic radiation, and they begin on wirelessly, what if we did it through light through screens? And it turns mm. out you can. And that's the reason why all your computer screens have the frequencies they have. So why is this all important? I think we should stop trying to manipulate the weather. I, th I would say so. Did you hear what scientists are doing in Canada? What? A team of scientists from the UK are currently trying to figure out how to refreeze the ocean yeah. because they're saying that all the ice in the Arctic will melt away in 10 to 20 years, which will cause global flooding. Flooding, the weather will just be crazy, crazy storms, crazy cold winters. But they're like, oh, it's not geoengineering or weather manipulation. It's called geomimicry. So it's like we're just creating something that nature has already created before. Got it. It's like, I would call that manipulation. Yeah. <laughs> Cloud seeding is the same concept. Yeah. You could say they that just about done that. You could say that about cloning. That's just so. because it did exist doesn't mean I want it to exist again. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you want a T-Rex in your backyard. 
Kind of. But you know something that would be really cool to see is what it's like underneath. Yeah. Because it was a jungle at one point, they so, they speculate. This is the uh, Arctic. That's true. That'd be dope. Up top. I, I don't know the difference. Antarctic, bottom. Which one was a jungle? Bottom? Bottom. Bottom. What's up top? Arctic. Where are all the mysteries? Both. Where's it going? Is it coming this way? It's going right through. It's got, it looks like it's going to go through the orchards. Girls, go get in the closet. to a ditty party you don't go that's just one person in the music industry imagine the film industry pro sports industry corporate oil industry big tobacco industry you name the industry the rule of thumb at cia is that every time you catch a mole you have to assume there's two more so when you catch a mole a penetration inside your agency when you catch a robert hansen an aldrich ames yep. a jerry lee you have to assume there's at least two more because the one that you got in the one that was there is the one that you caught and the one that you caught whoever's handling them is running at least two so that they can always have informants about the other so if we caught one from the music industry there's probably Snakes. two more rich people are connected to other rich people they have rich people problems which average people can't even fucking conceptualize yeah. and to your government intelligence services why would you talk to a normal fucking person when you could always get your ass in front of a politician a famous musician an actor it's not hard to get in front of one of those people when you are an intelligence officer and those people are guaranteed to have access to information that can be useful in your own endeavors to collect and manipulate and influence foreign countries foreign elections foreign state media. of florida going through tornado warnings and they are everywhere and let me show you why this is not normal. Somehow, another almost hurricane popped up right in front of Milton and hit Florida before it did. And yeah, we know it's not a hurricane, but it's literally organized just like one. And like I told you, this is not normal. You can see a demonic manifestation before it even got there. And just like in 2016, it's a skull. Yeah. These are literally the tornado warnings for Florida. I, I'm scared for y'all. Y'all, look at this. When have we ever seen something like this? This is not normal. Even the birds were going down the street warning people, just like with Helene, when all the black bears got up in that really high tree. Milton is still hitting in a category four, even though they keep saying it was gonna weaken, it was gonna weaken, it kept getting stronger and stronger. I wonder if it's gonna get stronger still. You tell me that's impossible, but I tell you that Helene was able to keep the same strength going a thousand miles. Literally, tornadoes are ravaging Florida right now, and here's the weird part. I think this giant tornado here is this giant extra formation we see in front of Milton. Craziest part, in the movie Category 6 about a giant hurricane, it mixes with a giant tornado. I just hmm. And there's still another hurricane coming next week. the last time you guys can recall somebody having to do hurricane recovery during the snow? Alright, so it's officially started snowing up here near Banner Elk. Uh, nothing's sticking right now, it's probably too warm, but it is snowing up here. And I don't know about where you guys are at, but in the south, it got cold quick. Looks like we went from summer to winter overnight. Crazy.
What if I told you that all of the me- Stop. something very interesting on this two dollar bill y'all i want y'all to see this who the fuck is that who is that who is that black man on the back of this two dollar motherfucker who is that i need to know who is that that's um my hometown, Swannanoa, North Carolina, and surrounding areas were hit by the storm Helene. I know we've pretty much made it out of the news cycle and a lot of people think things must be okay there now. Take a ride with me and let's go look just to see how normal things are here in Swannanoa. The political party, the business party, mm. it has two factions called Republicans and Democrats. Both factions put up conservative Republicans and the differences between them are very slight. If you want to have a good prediction as to what's going to happen, take a look at the markets. Take a look at the international financial markets. If they thought there was any fear that Clinton would pursue any policies oriented toward the general population, the dollar would be declining, there'd be capital flight and so on. They're quite happy. Breaking news, everyone. We just found out how to build a pyramid. Turns out the pyramid deniers were right this entire time, and it is possible to build pyramids today. Let me show you how it's done. First, we obviously got to prep our stone blocks using high-powered 20th century machinery. Let's load it up in this truck right here. Oh, well, that didn't really work. Let's try again over here. Oh, whoops. You, you, you weren't supposed to see that. This modern crane right here should do the trick. Uh... Yeah, maybe not. Turns out even modern technology struggles to lift these megalithic stones. And the ones we saw here weren't even more than like 20 tons. Here we have an industrial grade crane barely lifting a 30 ton rock just a few feet off the ground. Yet the ceiling stones of the King's Chamber and the Great Pyramid of Giza were around 80 tons each lifted over 50 meters off the ground over 4,000 years ago, all with allegedly more primitive technology. Not sure how they did that. Obviously, it's totally possible to lift these stones with modern technology. It's just not always easy. And again, we're talking modern technology made in the past hundred years. The fact that we're even questioning the technological possibility of building stone block pyramids with the advanced cranes and trucks of today is impressive on its own. And we haven't done it yet, so we don't even have hard proof that we actually can. Oh wait, yeah, I forgot. We did build one. Actually, we built a lot. And of course we did. Pyramid shaped structures are very possible to build using modern materials and methods such as pouring concrete or putting together intentionally manufactured smaller pieces of glass and metal in order to form bigger parts, which we piece together and is how impressive feats of architecture like the Burj Khalifa are possible. But it's when you use singular stone blocks weighing up to 80 tons from hundreds of kilometers away, even smaller two ton blocks of sheer raw stone using no machinery is when things get questionable and the process even becomes more impressive than the end result. Here's a one ton block of stone versus a truck yeah that shit is heavy so instead of completely shutting down speculation on how these impressive structures were made maybe we should be asking ourselves what lost technology did our ancient ancestors have who have all been wondering the same exact question their entire life, but they've never asked anyone because they're afraid that they'd seem absolutely insane if they ever did. What do you see when you close your eyes? Do you just see black and nothingness? Or do you, like me, sometimes see what appears to be fractals, fuzzies, or geometric shapes? For some people, it's more like the Windows Media Player from the 90s. For others, it's more of a sort of static. Well, I finally learned what it's called. It's called a CEV, closed eye visualization. Apparently there are five levels of closed eye visualization. So get in the comments and let me know what you see when you close your eyes, because I wonder if we see the same thing. If when you close your eyes, you see what appears to be static, that's a level one CEV. And apparently people who can see this with their eyes closed can also train themselves to see this with their eyes open. If when you close your eyes, you see light or dark flashes, that would be a level two closed eye visualization. You might experience this in color or just in photo 
fuzzy shapes. But if yours is more like this one, then that would be level three. If you see patterns that are in motion and in color. If what you see is like the media player, then this is you. Apparently level four and five are the most rare. If you can actually see objects appear and disappear, you can do that, then you're on level four. And level five is the most insane in my opinion. People who have level five closed eye visualizations can override their physical perception of the real world. It's like literally creating another world in your own mind. Typically this level can only be entered in a sensory deprivation. I had that with P. Diddy. I went over to say hello to P. Diddy and Jay-Z was there. Hello to P. Diddy and Jay-Z was there and um, Leonardo DiCaprio was sat at the Oh, I think you've dropped enough names. <laughs> Central Heights, San Francisco. I've already found a stamped brick with A R R, and we know that that used what used to be there said T car. It's T C A R R. Look at this. You can see there are still fully intact bricks in what is otherwise fully melted like that one right there much of it is melted beyond recognition but a lot of it like this is Clearly. still obviously a wall now, how old is this tree how long ago did this happen? It's all brick and it's all melted down like as if it was candle wax hit with a blowtorch. Like flowing down channels, channels of melted brick. still bricks sitting there and that's the same the same kind of brick that this is that's stamped you can even see some sort of other detail right there brick and all melted in a heat event that must have been similar to nuclear fire because what temperature would it take to turn bricks into this days ago swana noah started smelling like the next day we started seeing little white markers everywhere along the river in the mud after that, each night, there were equipment crews out there working all night, shutting down during the day. We're not stupid. The numbers on the news are wrong. Look, look at me now. Look at the camera, look at the camera. It's done. You did it. For as little as what you did, you did it. So you can say you did it. Four and a half hours. Yeah, unfortunately we couldn't get everything in. But you really all really cut oh, my foot. Yeah, let me see your foot. Yeah. You really kind of freak me out about that. Yeah, your foot no, is it's pretty, pretty bad. bad. Yeah. For those of you that are just now coming into what was supposed to be this five part series that I was creating on TikTok, um, this is Christina Butler. She was a participant at McCamey Manor and she actually made it all the way through. Christina, look at me, look at me. <laughs> she she was, <laughs> was that a ride? Was that a ride for you? Oh my god. <laughs> it was neat. I will say, you are a tough chick. Yeah, she is, man, right? <laughs> You're tough, man. You're tougher than Spencer. No, why'd you come back? <laughs> <laughs> but you won't be back now. So, Beth, 
uh, was another participant, and she's sitting right next to her, and you could hear her say, she said, why did she come back? This is actually Christina's second time coming to McCamey Manor. Oh, yeah, she'll be back. She'll come back. She'll be back. But I know I go talk shit on the damn the thing no more. I know About what? I talk shit no more. Yeah, that wasn't very. So good. you're tougher than Spencer, and you're tougher and than Beth. Come here, where's Beth? Beth. That wasn't just. Come here, Beth. Sit down here. Yeah, let's talk about that. The majority of you. Sit down, Beth. Sit, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. You guys down. make eye contact. Make eye contact. <laughs> Hold hands. So you guys, so look over here. So, Christina, what do you have to say to Beth? You're no longer my Facebook. My face, FaceTime. How many friend. times did you guys Skype? Oh my God! Came? How many times FaceTime? Will you unblock? Like so we can clearly see throughout the time that Christina mm -hmm. and Beth have both been here, it looks to it looks to seem like Christina has lost a lot of hair either being uh, cut off or just buzzed off, and even some of her eyebrows as well. It looks like that she even has some injuries on her lips. I don't know, I'm blocking you now. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you feel that, how do you feel about Beth just tossed you under, look at all the hair she's got still, she's got all of her hair left. <laughs> oh, what does that mean? How does that make you feel? Hey, give me the scissors. Actually, to be honest, I'm out, I'm out. Pissed off. She's <laughs> like, <"No." laughs> She said she's pissed off. She did have a full head of hair whenever she started this. Well, again, the, the second round. Do you know that this boy, Ryan Hammonds, literally lived twice? This is such a good reincarnation story. Let's get into it. When Ryan was four years old, he started directing imaginary movies and his parents thought it was really cute. He'd be going around shouting action, acting out scenes, the whole lot. Then things took a bit of a dark turn. Ryan would wake up in the middle of the night screaming and wailing, clutching his chest and saying that his heart had exploded when he was in Hollywood. Now, this little boy was from Oklahoma. He had never been to Hollywood, but he started describing his life there. He said he had a big white house and a swimming pool and he had three sons, but he couldn't remember their names. And he used to sob to his mother, asking her, why can't I remember my children's names? During this time, his mother had spoken to doctors, etc., and they just said, look, he'll just grow out of it, but he didn't. He kept becoming really upset about his children, why he couldn't remember them, about his previous life in Hollywood, and eventually the mother said, look, I'll get some books on old Hollywood, and maybe that will help him to explore these feelings that he's having. In one of these books, there was a still image from the 1930s film Night After Night, and in this particular still image, there are men having a confrontation, two men, and then they are surrounded by four other men. And Ryan stopped on this picture. The mother didn't know the film, nor did she recognize any of the actors in the picture, but Ryan stopped, pointed at a man in the picture and said, hey, that's George, we did a picture together. And of course, George Raft was one of the actors in the film, but then he pointed to another man and he said, that's me. I found me. I think it's important to note at this point that there were no names provided in the book as to who these actors were, but after some research, the mother was able to find out that this actor was indeed George Raft, who was kind of a lesser known actor from the 30s and 40s, but she was not able to identify the man that Ryan claimed to be him. So she wrote to Jim Tucker, who was an associate psychiatry professor, and he agreed to take on Ryan's case and help them as much as he could. Eventually, they were able to get a film archivist to look at the picture and they found out that this man was a man named Martin Martin. Yes, that was his real name. And he was an uncredited extra in this film. And here's where it gets even crazier. So because they now had his name, they were able to track down Martin Martin's daughter and they brought Ryan to meet her. Ryan said in his previous life, he was a dancer and Martin Martin danced on Broadway. Ryan said that when his dancing career ended, he became an agent in Hollywood where people changed their names. And Martin Martin worked for a very well-known talent agency in Hollywood where people often adopted stage names. Ryan also said that his old address had Rock in the name and Martin Martin had lived at 825 North Roxbury Drive in Beverly Hills. Ryan also said that he had been friends with a man named Senator Five. And Martin Martin's daughter produced a picture of her father with Senator Ives. 
and Senator Ives had been in the US Senate from 1947 to 1959. And as it turned out, Martin Martin did indeed have three sons and his daughter was finally able to tell Ryan their names.